We've got Mel England, one of the actors. We have Jeff London, the director. And tell us about Best Day Ever Movie. Well, Best Day Ever Movie came um, out of me turning uh, from 49 to 50 years old. And I had heard about this midlife crisis for years, but never thought I would have to deal with it. And um, I dealt with it hard for a couple of months. And after a while, I thought, I'm going to write about this because no one talks that much about it and uh, with men. And so I put it in the form of a romance drama and uh, about a guy trying to come with terms uh, the rest of his life. Uh, what, what will, he has 35, 40 years left. How is he going to make himself happy? What, what will he change? His, his days are numbered, and that's a major reality check that he has to come to grips with. Well, and, and it uh, sounds like a very grim analysis, but it's a very true one. And as we know, there are hundreds of millions of men exactly in this position. And popular culture tells us, well, it's all over now. You've turned 50. Roll credits. But I will tell you, um, reliably informed as I am, that a lot of people have found this is the best time in their life. Does the movie express some of that? The movie does express that. It, gets, it touches all the bases. Uh, I, I, I didn't fall in love until I was 40, 48, 48 and a half. And so over, over half my life was spent being single. And I thought, well, I, I'm the perfect person to write about this and talk about this. And I have found that uh, after I got over the initial shock of turning 50, life is great. I have myself figured out. So I'm happy. I'm well-adjusted. I've surrendered to the things that maybe I couldn't get or thought I should have in my life. And I'm, I'm very content now. Let's say hi to the actor, Mel England. He's also, he's in Los Angeles. Jeff, where are you located right now? I'm in Arizona. You're in Arizona. Mel England is a Hollywood actor here who's jumping off the high dive, uh, playing gay, as it were, if I'm not mistaken. And um, Oh, wait, is this a gay movie? Wait, stop. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I know, shocking. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I am. And actually, in, in a weird way for me, uh, Harrison, it's great to be back here with you. And thank you so much. And uh, Jeff, who I'm just like, I'm so in love with with his story. Um, and it's been a, a, a it, it has been kind of a departure for me because actually in spite of the fact that as I've been on your show in the past, talking about being an openly gay actor in Hollywood, which, you know, there are now more and more, which is exciting. Uh, but this is like one of the first gay films that I've done. In fact, it is the first gay role for me. So it's exciting for me. I'm, I'm like, woohoo. You know what else is interesting, Mel? And we see that uh, typically straight actors are cast playing gay. Either it's a internalized homophobia on the part of Hollywood that still is normal somehow. But it's a rare day indeed and becoming more normal that a gay actor gets cast as a gay character. And many thanks to Jeff, the director who we have here with us, for acknowledging congruity or congruency uh, in that regard, right? Absolutely. Oh, go ahead. It's 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 been uh, it's been a challenge over the years uh, getting actors to come on board that were that were straight or getting actors that were gay. They they thought, what well, you know, I've heard it time and time again. I'm not comfortable with the playing a, a gay character, and uh, they just they just don't match up sometimes. And often, uh, I've wound up casting mostly straight actors to play to to play gay lead characters. Because and, you go ahead, Mel. No, I was just going to ask because why, Jeff? <laughs> uh, because they were uh, fear uh, afraid of uh, being labeled, being associated with that type of movie. The, the gay, but, the gay actors are, have have often in the past, and I think it is the past. But you know, that's all. You know, that's where we come from. But a lot of gay actors historically have been afraid to do that because they don't. You know, it's like it, you know, math. Um, uh, what's his name and uh, you know Heath Ledger or Jake Gyllenhaal or all these guys can take that stretch and play gay but then they get to go back to being you know the straight leading man and so I think for a lot of gay actors there's always been that fear that if I do that I'll never I'll be labeled for the rest of time I, I'm hoping that we're moving beyond all that really. I have a theory and both of you can comment on it actually it's a hypothesis because I haven't proved it yet Actually, there's only, and there's only one of them, but here's my hypothesis, that 
Many gay people who have lived in the closet some portion of their life or have friends and have grown up around this kind of duality, uh, it is a life of being an actor, acting straight. I would think it would give you extra special competency weaponry in actual acting because you've done it so much of your life already. Well, for me personally, I sort of was out since, well, not since I came out of the womb, but certainly I was sort of like knowing and out from a very young age. So I, and also being in New York stage, I didn't have that same pressure of say being in the closet that a lot of Hollywood film actors. So I came into Hollywood at a later point in my life and started getting cast later in my life. And at a certain point, it was like the Susie Orman school of, you know, coming out, which years ago she said, I never really came out. It's just that nobody cared. And so, you know, for me, it's like, it's been a process of like suddenly becoming a little more known as an actor and, but I already was out. So there's been less at stake for me than some of my friends who have become very successful actors that have been known that then did have to make the decision in a very public, big way. Should I be in or should I be out? I always think this conversation is fascinating because we never look at it from the reverse. It's like we never really discuss like the fact that a majority of the heterosexual roles in Hollywood are played by gay guys. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't say that. I, I know that. <laughs> Don't quote me. I no. won't. But no, I'm not, you know, like, so there's so many like straight roles that are, I mean, Actors are actors, and I think that's the bottom line. I hope we're moving beyond that. But what's exciting for me, and, and, and I think for Jeff in, in making this film, is that we're dealing with something that's so uniquely a gay male experience of having that midlife crisis, that something that we all, straight or gay, go through. But something happens with gay men where we have so much... Um, about our physical appearance, that uh, the pressure of that, we're valued the same way, kind of like women are. Like women, it's like when they get older. So there's that issue, and then there's also just the normal, regular, everyday, uh, straight or gay issue of having a midlife crisis. So there's like a lot of pressure. I think there's a feeling often when gay men hit that midlife thing that like it's over, you know, uh, I'm out to pasture, but as you said, Carrie, from maybe your own experience, it's actually just the beginning. And it's actually a really exciting time. I and think it really is. And Jeff, let's get into your call to action here. Going from over from, from two likes to uh, now almost 300 likes in, in less than a week is just amazing. That told me that there is a need for this. And, you know, I went through because I went through the midlife crisis myself. This this turned out to be a great thing. This turned out to be something that helped me work work through the issue. And now something I find out that is something that gay guys need out there. We we all need this, gay or straight. And it's just uh, it's 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 self affirming that life can go on after fifty and it can be happier. And we we deal with issues uh, such as the boyfriend that that. It picks on picks on the lead for maybe eating eating his cake or eating too many sweets and say hey you're getting old now and you're, you're, those those pounds are not going to come off as easy anymore I mean we really we really touch on all these issues that we all deal with privately but we have to you know put on this facade in, in life that uh, we're all dealing with it fine that that's one of the things I love to say Carrie real fast about Jeff's script is it's so deeply personal and so um, almost raw in a certain way about looking at that sort of, you know, the transition that this guy is making that when I read it, I was so moved and, and compelled. I was like, how could I not do this? Because, you know, as an actor, you think I want to be pretty. I want to, you know, I want everybody to like me. And it, this has kind of got an element of, of allowing to, you know, like, you know, warts and all. And so, and, and that's why the writing is so compelling. I think he's written a really wonderful script. A lot of gay men, especially of the generation that everybody who survived and has made it here, and now suddenly everybody's, you know, here. It's like uh, something that I think people are really going to relate to. Well, I thank you guys so much for having put this project together. And thanks again for offering a voice for the other half of the human race, which I think hopefully you're setting a new example for what's possible at the other side of the rainbow. Amen. Amen. That's great. I'd love to hear it. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Fellas. 
Okay. Bye.